What's up Scrollgers, it's Nerp here. Today is my first deck guide video. What better way to kick off the series by overviewing the deck that has kept me at or very close to rank number one the past couple of months, Aggrowth. Aggrowth is aggressive growth. This is a creature heavy deck that continuously pounds the opponent's units and idols until it loses board control. Growth has lots of strong creatures for low cost, so with this deck you can win the game fast without having to go over 5 or 6 resources. Powerful spells and enchantments complement the variety of creatures. I recommend this deck for beginners to get into the rank ladder because it's extremely strong and rather simple to play. This 50 scroll deck has 21 common scrolls, 21 uncommon scrolls, and 8 rare scrolls. If we take the just for you section of the store's prices of 100 gold per common, 500 gold per uncommon, and 1000 gold per rare, this deck would cost just over 20,000 gold. I looked at the actual prices for each scroll on the black market, and got a remarkably close total. This deck might seem expensive, but it is not that much for a top tier ranked deck. If you have trouble mustering up all that gold, at the end of the video, I will show ways to reduce the cost by altering the deck slightly. Ag Growth is doing very well in the current meta. Here is how I rated it up against other current meta decks. 10 being a surefire win for Ag Growth, 5 being a fair matchup, and 1 being Ag Growth as a severe disadvantage. I pulled these numbers out of my head from my own experiences of playing this deck so much, so take them with a grain of salt. Let's start to actually overview the deck. There are 33 creatures, 2 structures, 9 spells, and 6 enchantments. These are your main powerful creatures. They will be the ones most often sustaining your board control. Each one is a prime target for enchantments because they will have either one countdown or relentless. You want to get the Brave out early to lock down the board. He is easily destroyed, but if your opponent doesn't have an answer to him, you will have control of the center of the board and an idol destroyed very quickly. Well and Ranger is like the daddy of Kinfolk Brave. It costs two more, but it has four health, protecting it from burns or Kinfolk veterans. Sometimes, the Ranger will serve as a secondary role by activating his Pillage effect for a pseudo Ancestral Totem attack buff but I most often use him for a healthier Kinfolk Brave that I can get enchanted with an Earthen Mirtha Summon to deal massive damage every single turn. Striped Fang Bear is a 4-2-4 four, relentless four unit most of the time. That is amazing for 4 cost. Just stay away from playing him that often if you don't see your opponent playing many humans, like an Automaton deck. Sometimes, the massive enchanted attack every turn from the Brave or Ranger won't be able to get past little chump blockers, so you need to have strong relentless creatures to clear rows, like with Striped Fang Bear. The big daddy of the deck, the Great Wolf. This guy is the one your opponent will want to save his Violent Dispersals or Damage Curses on. A lot of other wolves in this deck help him get even stronger. Get a couple of these guys down and protect them to have a smooth ride to victory. Here are the rest of the creatures. They are not the core of the deck, but they are necessary. The Haste of Ragged Wolf is amazing. You can use him to snipe vetters, increase Great Wolf's attack, or even get a powerful Hasted attack combined with an attack buff on him. Haste is probably the best trait in the game. That is why Kinfolk Veteran is also in this deck. He's expensive at 5 costs, and you usually want to play Great Wolf or another strong threat instead of the Veteran, but he is a must have. The 3 Hasted attack means you can remove your, creature, your opponent's creatures and play your own solid creature in one scroll. Haste is almost like Growth's form of removal. A turn 1 better of the wild is ideal for this deck. It makes an already aggressive deck even faster. It means you can play your 3 drops on turn 2, your 4 drops on turn 3, and so on. You might be in a tough spot if your vetter is killed by a Ragged Wolf or a Kabonk, so make sure you have a backup play in your hand that costs less resources. The Nog is the least valuable creature in the deck. It's just a vanilla 2-2-3. You can swap it out for a Kinfolk Ranger if you'd like. It is just there to provide more consistency for the deck so you have a 2 drop to play early on. The 3 drops in this deck are extremely important. Tarian Brute's 4 attack and 4 health are great for only 3 cost. I often use him as a big wall in the early game. Meiji Wolf isn't great as a turn 3 player or turn 2 play, and he's not good in his own either. But he's amazing for when you have any other, wolf, other wolves on the board with one countdown, specifically Great Wolves. Whenever you have a Great Wolf on the board, you'll find yourself praying to draw Mangy Wolves. 
Earthborn Mystic is probably the most overpowered creature in Scrolls. She does so much for only 3 resources. Although this isn't a strict enchantment deck, you need to include her for her 4 health as a 3 drop, card draw, and attack buff. These are the utility scrolls of the deck. Stackheart and Earthen Mirth are super powerful enchantments that you can draw from Earthborn Mystic and play in Relentless or 1 Countdown creatures. Rally is another way to get your Great Wolves or Fang Bears to attack, but I found myself not often playing it because it's very costly. Same with Crimson Bull, it's a nice way to increase your attack, but at 3 cost, it's often not worth it. I don't play Rally or Crimson Bull that often, but I like them as options in the deck if necessary. Ancestral Totem is a solid attack buff. Being 4 cost and easily destroyed isn't always good. I only run 2 of them. The real magic of the totem is that your kinfolk veterans will have that perfect 4 attack to take down walls, and ragged wolves will have 2 attack. The ancestral totem is also great against decay because decay has a hard time removing structures unless they have a road. Rumble is a spell that is necessary in this deck, although not that great. It is very luck heavy, so play it at your own risk. Oftentimes it is completely backfiring, and you wasted a scroll to put you in a worse situation than you started in. But other times it is absolutely necessary for sniping the last idol or moving a wing shield out of the way. Here is the resource curve from my aggro growth deck. The way you want to play is to ramp up to 4 or 5 resources, and then start sacrificing for scrolls to play 4 or 5 drop threats every single turn. On the way to 4 or 5 resources, you want to have 1, 2, or 3 drops to play. If you don't, and your first creature is on turn 4 or 5, you might be in some big trouble because this aggro growth deck does not have removal or board clear mechanics, so you need to control the board from the get go. In aggressive decks like this, the starting hand is crucial. I will mulligan if I don't have a 2 and 3 drop in hand, or a veteran and 3 drop in hand. I also make sure I cross my fingers to go first. Now the growth starter deck comes with a lot of these scrolls, so I don't think it's going to be quite the 20,000 gold I said earlier to buy this deck. But if you're still having trouble coming up with the, the funds to get it, there are some slight adjustments that you can make. I don't think it's going to be quite as effective, because this deck is like optimized, um, I sustained number one of the ladder with it for a couple of months, so I really think you should play just like this, but there are certain things you can do, like you can swap out the expensive Kinfolk Brave for other growth 2 drops, notably Gravehawk, Kinfolk Ranger, Nognest, Outcast Rebel, Sister of the Fox, Ventral Vetter. I'd be pretty comfortable with any of those 2 drops instead of Kinfolk Brave. Obviously it wouldn't be the same deck, but it would be almost as good I think. And then the enchantments Staggard and Earthen Mirth I think are the best enchantments for it. But stuff like Champion Ring or Dryadic Power, which might not actually be cheaper. But they're just different things you can try out if you want. And then the big money savers here is Earthworm Mystic and Terrain Grit are really expensive uncommons. Especially Earthworm Mystic's like 1000 gold because she is OP. If you want to swap her out because she's expensive, you can go with other growth 3 drops like Breaker is an option. Earthborn Keeper is an option, um, Wildling is an option, those are all three things I would feel comfortable putting uh, those creatures in for. And another expensive uncommon scroll is Strugged Fang Bear, which growth has four drops that are pretty good. Instead of Strugged Fang Bear, you can put Rat Kings in, although they're rares, they're, I think they're only like 300 gold. So they're more like a lot of chump blockers, they're not that good for an aggressive deck because they're not big attackers. Um, I'd rather put Brother the Wolf in. It's a common scroll, much cheaper than Strike Banger. It will help out your brother, uh, your Great Wolf, and you should have a decent time with it. So those are some little adjustments you can make, and I guess that'll be it for this deck guide. So please comment below any suggestions if you like what I did, if you like the format, what you think I should do, what you think I shouldn't do, and anything related to that. So like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more content. I will see you next time. Keep on scrolling, scrollers.